Communities today struggle with roads congested with traffic, environments damaged by vehicle emissions, and children becoming inactive and overweight. At first glance, the solution to these problems appear to come from separate sources. But safe routes to school programs can address these challenges simultaneously. Safe routes to school programs are sustained efforts led by a community or school with a common goal to create and foster safe, inviting, and fun ways for children to walk and bike to school. Today, more than ever, there is a need to provide options that allow children to walk and bicycle to school safely. Not long ago, children routinely moved around their neighborhoods on foot or by bike, and that was often how they traveled to and from school. Today, fewer children walk and bicycle to school than did so 30 years ago, and many factors contributed to this reduction. Distance is a primary barrier to kids being able to walk and bike to school. Schools are built to accommodate more students, and fewer are located in the center of a community, but farther away from neighborhoods where families could walk or bike. Personal safety is also a concern. Fears of crime have kept some parents from allowing their child to walk or bike to school, while the perceptions of types of crimes occurring is much higher than the actual chance that it will. Safe routes to school must work to identify what are the real dangers and what are perceptions and address both. Traffic danger is also a concern. As communities have accommodated more motor vehicle traffic, opportunities to walk and bike have suffered. As traffic around a school increases, parents become more convinced that the environment is unsafe for their children to walk or bicycle to school. They then begin driving their children to school, adding even more traffic to the road and sustaining the cycle. Yet the unintended consequences of less walking and bicycling among children are staggering. More driving and less walking and bicycling can negatively impact air quality. Each year, automobiles emit millions of tons of pollutants into the air. And these pollutants can be especially harmful to children because of their developing respiratory systems. Children are increasingly becoming less active and more overweight. In fact, the percentage of children who are considered severely overweight has tripled in the last 30 years. Inadequate physical activity and poor eating habits are major contributors to the increased rates of childhood obesity in the United States. The growing obesity trend among adults is an alarming indication of what could happen to today's children. The following maps of the United States provide a portrait of the growth of obesity among adults in the U.S. since 1985. The maps show the percentage of U.S. adults in each state with a BMI of 30 or more, meaning they meet the medical definition of obesity. Public health and medical professionals have begun to speculate that the current generation of children may be the first that will not live as long as their parents. The time is right for a change, and safe routes to school is part of that change. Where it's safe, programs can get kids up and active before and after school. Where it's not safe, programs work to make it safe. The benefits of safe routes to school programs are countless. Walking and biking to and from school can contribute to the development of lifelong habits of incorporating physical activity into daily routines. Studies have shown that walking to school is associated with higher overall physical activity throughout the day. And there is a long list of benefits of this increased physical activity. Reduced risk of diabetes, hypertension, asthma, sleep apnea, as well as increased self-esteem. School administrators have reported that children who walk or bike to school arrive more alert and ready for the day. In fact, a higher level of physical activity has been associated with higher standardized test scores. Safe route programs also improve traffic safety around a school. Programs work to reduce and control traffic surrounding a school, which has both safety and environmental benefits. 
In fact, air quality is measurably better surrounding schools placed in neighborhoods where more students arrive by bike or on foot. Each school starts safe routes programs with different circumstances. Some schools have great places for walking and bicycling, but few students taking advantage of it. Other communities have children walking or bicycling to school in unsafe conditions or along poorly maintained routes. While some communities do not have children walking or bicycling to school at all. Safe routes to school programs have really grown in popularity in recent years. This is in part because of people's desire to be less dependent on cars, but also the tremendous popularity of Walk to School Day and the recent funding at the federal and state levels for these programs. Successful programs use a variety of education, engineering, and enforcement strategies that help make routes safer for children along with encouragement strategies to entice more children to walk and bike. And communities across the United States are already reaping the benefits of these programs. To kick off their Safe Routes to School program, Whitmore Elementary School in Waltham, Massachusetts began promoting Walk to School with Walking Wednesdays with the support of Mass Rides and the Healthy Waltham Initiative, the school organized a walking school bus, which consists of a group of parents and children who meet at a designated location and walk from that point to school with students joining along the way. The parents really just spearheaded how they could fix, identify, address all the issues that they were seeing in their community. And they created the walking school buses to really focus on that and increase the walkability and even the awareness of walking to school and changing that behavior. The program continues to grow with five walking school buses running every walking Wednesday. At the start of the program in the spring, 21% of the students walk to school. By the fall of that year, the percentage of students walking had increased to 53%. In Denver, Colorado, Ellis Elementary School and the Denver Osteopathic Foundation launched a Safe Routes to School program to increase walking and bicycling. Pedestrian safety skills were taught to grades kindergarten through second using a fun, interactive presentation. The school also included a bicycle skills workshop targeting third through fifth graders. The school also holds weekly walk and roll Wednesdays where students receive prizes as encouragement to walk and bike to school. Given the extremely diverse school population, the program also incorporates several translations of safety and education materials, including Spanish and Russian. Combining strong support from community partners, parents, and school administration, the school has seen an increase in the number of students walking and bicycling since the program started, from 27% of the student population to 36%. Now is the time to make good decisions for our communities and for the future of our children. With federal funding available for safe routes to school, Communities have the opportunity to allow children the healthier option of walking and bicycling to school. Ready to make your community safer and more fun for children to walk and bike to school? Please visit www.saferoutesinfo.org to contact your state's Safe Routes to School coordinator or call 1-866-610-SRTS for more information on bringing safe routes to school to your community.